To do my best as a creator in the field, I think it's really important to understand the technology that's kind of at the backbone of our processes as much as possible, right? So even though I'm not an engineer, even though I'm not an IT person, I try to dive pretty deep into the hardware that I'm using and really understand like what's going on inside of it and like why would I pick one solution over the other in sort of a very detail-oriented way. But when I purchased the Sony Burano and I saw this VPG 400 requirement that was in the manual, that was one of the first times in a long time that I've been kind of stumped. I was like, what is VPG certification? What is VPG 400? I know I've seen VPG 200, like what is going on? And then I scoured the internet looking for a white paper because that's what we do, right? And there was no white paper. I needed to figure out what is VPG and why does it matter because I'm seeing cards like the OWC CFB cards that I know mathematically are telling me all of the right numbers when it comes to read and write speed to work with this camera. So why is there this thing called a VPG certification? And so luckily I was able to unlock some answers at NAB with the help of OWC. And now I understand sort of what VPG is, where it's applicable, why it's important, and in what cases it may not be always as important. So that kind of sets up, I think, this conversation. VPG is a certification that was created by the CF Express Association that is basically a board of people that are all the CF manufacturers and they made a decision to create a standardized certification process that would ensure a certain level of performance in CF Express cards. This is the VPG standard. Right now, there's two different certification levels you can get. There's VPG 200 and VPG 400. Until the Sony Burano, there was no camera that listed in its manual that VPG 400 was a requirement. All of the Sony Alpha cameras and FX cameras, which are the only cameras on the market that use CF Express Type A, required that you have VPG 200 in order to record certain formats. So this would be like your higher formats, like the 8K resolution in the A1 or the 4K 120 frames per second in the FX3. And the camera would literally not allow you to record these formats unless your card had VPG metadata in it, letting the camera know that it was VPG certified. So why is this important? There's a lot of cards from names that we don't know coming from other parts of the world that advertise that they will work with these cameras. And I think it's impossible to vet all of these companies at scale. So that's where the certification comes in, right? You wanna know that if you put this card in the camera, that it's gonna work. And manufacturers like Sony need to be able to give you a piece of criteria without having to vet every card themselves that says, okay, this is gonna work in this camera, right? So that's where VPG 200 comes in. With the lower end models of Sony, the reason that they disabled recording without seeing that VPG flag was because they sell those cameras in such large quantities to such variable skill set of consumer that they just needed to do that in order to ensure performance and not have a lot of support phone calls, right? Whereas with the Sony Burano, which is a higher end camera with a smaller subset of users who usually have a little bit higher level of education when it comes to this pipeline, they listed in the manual that VPG 400 cards are guaranteed to work, but they did not disable functionality with non-VPG cards because there are cards that exist that are more than fast enough to work in the Sony Burano that may not have the VPG certification because again, the Burano is the first one to require this. And also it's a bit new to the industry. So for manufacturers to decide that it's necessary to put their product through this testing and pay what additional costs go with that, you know, may not be necessary. Cue the OWC CF Express Type B cards. I chose to buy the CF Express Type B cards from OWC despite not having the VPG 400 certification because I understood what was happening under the hood and was able to say without a shadow of a doubt that these cards will function in this camera perfectly. And then I was able to do all of the rigorous speed tests myself to back up that the sustained write speed 
of the CF Type B cards is 1500 megabytes a second, and the VPG requirement is only 400 megabytes a second, right? So even if they were off by a couple megabytes, we've got a lot of buffer to go from 1500 all the way down to 400. And I think the most important thing to recognize, at least when talking about the Burano specifically, is that the highest record format in the camera, which is ExoCNLT, is under 200 megabytes a second. So despite having the VPG 400 requirement listed in the manual, that's 400 megabytes a second, the highest codec doesn't even exceed what the VPG 200 requirements are. That may allude to some future uh, record formats that might find their way into the Burano, but I also think it's just a safety net for Sony as a manufacturer to say, we absolutely know this will work. But I think for higher end users like myself, I wanted to have a card that was even better. So I turned to OWC's CF Express Type B cards for that solution. If you put a CF Express Type B card into the Sony Burano that doesn't have the VPG metadata flag inside of it, then you're gonna get a message that says not guaranteed media. And all this means is that it's not guaranteed because Sony doesn't know what media you're putting in this camera. It just knows that it's not VPG 400. That doesn't mean it knows that the card isn't going to work. So in the case of these 4.0 cards that are blazingly fast, they are absolutely going to work. If you're, you know, okay with trusting the math and doing some of your own testing, you know, and realizing what's really going on under the hood, then I think you'll be comfortable using the CFB cards from OWC in something like the Sony Burano. In the case of OWC's CF Express Type A card, the reason that it has a VPG 200 certification, but they advertise that the card does 400 megabyte sustained write speeds is because those are sequential sustained write speeds. One of the VPG requirements is that you can maintain these speeds randomly writing to different blocks of the media, whereas cameras only record sequentially to CF Express cards. So the speeds that you really need to look at are what are the sequential write speeds as you're recording to the card. So for all intensive purposes, they do achieve the 400, but they only are able to get the 200 certification, which in the case of CF Express Type A cards is perfectly fine because VPG 200 is actually the only requirement for any existing Sony camera that uses that media. And not only is it the only requirement, but the highest level codec that you can record in an alpha or FX camera is around 75 megabytes a second. That's less than half of what VPG 200 requires. So there's no real reason to get a 400 certification. I wasn't particularly worried about the error message because I had done all of my own vetting and received a more comprehensive understanding of what VPG is, why it's there, and whether or not I need to pay attention to it in this case. I know way more than is necessary at this point to do my job. Thank <laughs> you.